Welcome to another episode of MSX Basic Programming, game programming in particular. This game is pretty much done. It does not have sound effects in it, uh, but it is playable. So this is my MSX version of Seawolf, which is probably my favorite arcade game that I'd ever played, simply because it was the first one back in the 70s. And so the point of this, on the original you had like a time limit. On this one there's no time limit. See an explosion there. Um, the ship that you're aiming at does change its speed. So there is a little bit of variety in the game. And I put the graphics up top, the like the island in the background with the sun up in the sky there. I thought that was kind of a nice little, you know, just a little graphical thing to do. Uh, well, you've seen the gameplay pretty much. So I'm going to explain this program. Now this uh, is going to be the first of the last episodes in this in this uh, basic game programming uh, and I will list it so you guys can get the listing Let's see like so from 160 up 170. Um, something interesting about MSX Basic that I didn't know about, which I'll get to in a minute. Kind of list the entire program, so those of you interested can type it in. Now this is more than just the game, it's actually got the development system in it too. which I'm going to show you as I go through the listing. Now, the next video is going to be the disassembly of the hardware to show the computer that I wrote this program in. Is that it? Yeah, I think it's the, yeah, that's the entire listing. Okay. So, when you run the program, sets up a graphic screen. It randomly draws the mountains in the background, which is kind of interesting code. Well, break it here. Let me see if I can find it. It, uh, the code that draws the mountains in the background is from line 372 to 379. So it's, uh, what, six or seven lines long or something. It's pretty cool code. It could be improved, probably, but, but something else this program has is, uh, let's see if I can remember the line number is the building sprite editor. So, you know, one thing that uh, it's very useful to have all your code in one program and that way you don't have to load different programs in because that was kind of a pain you know, if your computer can only basically have one program at a time, you know, then you gotta switch them out. But if all your code is in the same program, it makes it more complicated, but uh, it also makes it easier to add to it. So if I hit enter on go to 740, then it will redefine that sprite and it will display a data statement that you can actually cursor over the line and hit enter. Let me change the line number just in case. Hit enter. 
and then it will enter that line which is a useful thing uh, I think Atari started that with their 400 and 800 computers back in 79 Atari basic had a full screen editor and then later on the Vic 20 had it and the 64 had it but uh, I think Atari is the first one that had actually had full screen editing capability correct me if I'm wrong uh, so so you got that in there so you can redefine a character and like add it to your game and that's basically what I did with the, with the explosion sequence in this game because I had basically had it running but didn't have a little explosion sprite so that's how I created it uh, that's basically it you got the whole code if you want to type it in uh, you will need to use MSX basic version 1 and up I think it would be compatible with the all the other later versions that, that was supposed to be a big thing about MSX was backward compatibility supposedly I don't know if that's true but supposedly so that's the game so in the next video I'm going to disassemble this computer uh, this one right here and show you what makes it tick and how I built it thanks for watching I do appreciate it and uh, talk to you guys later have a good day